Today with the New York Giants, we are going to play the last game of the season. We're going to check out the awards and stats and take a deeper look at the league and how it's developed over the course of the season so far. We will not be getting to the playoffs today. That video will be coming tomorrow. I saw a lot of feedback about making sure starters played this last game. And there are a lot of good arguments because getting the boost to development is really important for long-term development overall. And we want to see Brian Petrovsky at least get up to star or superstar so his skills don't plateau. He's a really good quarterback, but there's still room for him to get better. And he's the 15th best in our league right now on paper. So I checked out the feedback and didn't really see a consensus as far as like, play the last game or skip the last game and let's get on to the postseason. I saw a ton of feedback just about making sure Petrovsky played this last game because he may have a chance to win some awards. So we are going to play this game out. I am planning on letting the starters play most of the game. Maybe the first half and then get some backups going in the second half. It depends if Petrovsky can put up some production early on or not. But here's a look at the yearly awards right now. We're about to face likely MVP Lamar Jackson. Brian Petrovsky's currently in fourth place, so it's unlikely that he's able to take that top spot. Coach of the year right now, not Russ Watson, apparently. Come on, man. I should shut the game off right now. Check out the coach of the year voting though. We got Urban Meyer. Matt Nagy on the Bengals, Matt Rule on the Panthers. Madden, are you good? Christian McCaffrey might be your offensive player of the year, but Saquon Barkley and Brian Petrovsky are right behind him in the standings. What would it take for Petrovsky to get to that top spot? Defensive player of the year, Daniil Hunter right now. We have Dexter Lawrence in fourth place. That's pretty cool. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Felix Landry. We have Nelson Galloway in ninth place. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Curtis Bernard with Quandre Holt coming up in fifth place. Jason Quinton behind him. It's likely Petrovsky could be the best quarterback as long as he stays in front of Sam Darnold. Christian McCaffrey, best running back ahead of Saquon Barkley. Then Robert Woods could be the best receiver this year. Zach Martin, best O-lineman. We don't usually check these out beforehand, but it is nice to know when you're close to see if maybe you can raise a couple of spots in the standings or if you have to just hold on. But it's been a phenomenal season here for Petrovsky, and I'm hoping that Scrambler can stay his primary archetype. This is a pretty good upgrade here all around, and Scrambler is showing as the primary once again. I thought his year two was a little step back. I wouldn't call it a sophomore slump. It was just not as good as his first season. But this year, by all accounts, I mean, you look at the touchdown numbers, interception, quarterback rating, yardage, how many times he sacked, completion percentage, yards per attempt. It's all way better, including his rushing yards. I don't think we need to see a lot of Saquon Barkley in Week 18, however, because he is an X-Factor at 99. Saquon Barkley has reached his ceiling. It's probably more important for him to be ready for the playoffs. And for us to know, like, if Barkley, for instance, leaves the game, first playoff game, first quarter, we want to know who can come in and take over those carries. I think we can gain some information this week. I also think we could look at maybe playing some of the receivers a little bit differently here. We'll probably start out with the starting lineup and then look to do some rotation. And hopefully by the end, we can get a deeper look at some of the backups that we have less info on. We got James Bradbury here. That is a career high seven interceptions. I saw some of you in the comments also making sure if I played the backups here, I didn't have them playing in the postseason. Wasn't that a situation, though, where I had simulated, like, if we were actually playing the game, I'd notice the backups in there and then make the changes. But uh, if I ever want to sit everybody and sim to the next week, I won't do it from this menu. 
You can go into the game, change the depth chart from there, and then sim to the end without affecting the universal depth chart here that would uh, carry on to the next week. I'm going to pick Contain QB Scramble because I want to see if uh, anything noticeable happens. And I would like to throw it medium. I don't know, throw it deep is also interesting. I'll go with medium because of the release boost. But with uh, this Baltimore defense, they're a more blitz heavy defense. They call a lot of zone blitzes here, not so many man to man blitzes. But I'd like to get some big plays if possible. But this defense, I mean, check it out. They're real good. We got a lot of upgrades to take care of, by the way. And we'll spend the time here. It's kind of a prep for the playoffs episode. Instead of stuffing this all into the intro of playoff episode, I can take my time a bit better. Antonio Golson last episode did get the boost the Superstar Dev. And next year, he has the chance to cash in. This is the other thing to think about. If we sign Aziz Ojolari to the mega deal and we already have like Lawrence on a big one, like Golson might be the better long-term player to sign and his year is next year. Of course, we'll see at the end of the year, like what our cap situation looks like. And there are some players who are not likely to return like Leonard Williams. So... You know, anything can happen here. It's all about if it fits, and we'll have to see. But if we do move on from him, that could mean a player like Tyler Beltran has to step up a lot more next season. I feel like we haven't seen a whole lot from Beltran as a pass rusher throughout his career. Just four and a half sacks. He's been better against the run, but we definitely need to get him some competition. Here's a player we need to see more of today. We absolutely need to see Gordon Bright, because like I mentioned earlier in that hypothetical situation, if we lose Saquon Barkley, we lose that home run hitting ability, unless Gordon Bright can give us some of that. Saquon Barkley's not playing today, there's just no point. We know everything we have to know about Saquon Barkley, it's the most punishing position on the field. Barkley is out for week 18. Aaron Slay will be in. I'd actually like to see him play a lot of snaps today. And uh, I really think next year he's going to be taking over for Sterling Shepard. Route runner upgrade here going to Kadarius Tony, who impressed me last episode. He created separation against Denzel Ward and his route running has gotten much better. And always good to see like the entire offensive line get upgrades. So we have Christian Tolbert first. We go to the other side of the line to upgrade Chris Basley. He's at a 79 with a morale boost. Two points. Like, come on, give me something to work with here. Emmanuel Adkins, right guard. Morale is pushing him to an 80 right now. Where does he rank, by the way? 15. So left guard seems to be a lot deeper than right guard. I also noticed that Quinton's X Factor was not showing up. He's supposed to have Mind Reader, and I guess I have to manually apply Superstar abilities because he has nothing there right now. Or, actually, those unlock once he gets to, like, an 80. Isn't that right? So at 80 and like 85, there are different milestones there and it would be nice to get him there before our first playoff game, but I think we'll fall short of that. So we just take him down to normal, put him back at X Factor and those should be appearing. Again, don't know why that is an issue inside of Super Sim, but uh, we've come to know these bugs pretty well, haven't we? Oh. Can I actually apply some of these now? Secure Tackler? Oh, I can actually put one of these abilities on. Interesting. What about mid-zone KO here? Having the ability to force more catch knockouts and react quicker in any midfield zone coverage less than 20 yards from the line of scrimmage. That's a long sentence. I'm done with it. MVP Lamar Jackson for the second time, it appears. And it's another matchup against one of the top teams in the AFC. I think we've faced the best. 
we can face, what, four or five AFC teams now with the new scheduling rules? I do like that there's a fifth out-of-conference game. I felt like evening that up is better. In some leagues, like, conference matters and, like, I don't know, you don't face, like, interleague play in baseball was, like, a month-long celebration for a while. And then it just became more of a regular part of the league. And I'm like, yeah, we don't need to actually worry about conferences a whole lot. It's just a nice way to separate uh, the teams for a playoff bracket. That's really it. And I don't mind playing most of your games against your conference, but I didn't think 12 games in, 4 games out was at all good for the product. Ensuring that Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers would play each other once every 4 years. And they didn't even do that because uh, I think Rodgers missed one of the meetings. That was, of course, back when Brady was still in New England, but uh, maybe I'll focus on this game now. So I think what I'm going to do is kind of give Towns a couple drives, Ruben Knight, and then Gordon Bright. They're all playing today, not Saquon Barkley. You are not getting on the field today. Get ready for the postseason. Get rested up. It's going to be a good time. So, up first is going to be Tavares Towns. He'll take all the running back snaps early on. And I want to see more of Aaron Slay in this game. Michael Thomas will still play some, but not in the slot today. We're going to give a chance to Aaron Slay. There should be some more substitutions throughout the game, and we'll likely let Luke cook at some point. But we start off on defense. Lamar Jackson throwing outside, and that is a quick gain of eight yards. Mark Andrews. Really a fan of this set of uniforms here for Baltimore. As the play is made by Leonard Williams. Saw a comment on the last episode shouting out Luke Pope for his run defense. And I think he has been a big part of getting that under control. Down goes Jackson, it's Jason Quinton. Let's diagnose how this one happened. I am excited to see what Quinton can do. And we have a play here where he's actually sent on a blitz, so he's able to get there pretty quickly. And he, it's just speed here. Phillips is not able to square him up here and block him out of the hole. And without Quinton's speed there, I mean, Lamar is going a while. Tavares Towns is the running back, and we take over first and 10 Giants. And Petrovsky's going to read option keep. I would uh, love the ability to remove those all for one day and one day only. I don't need read option in this one. Looks like Baltimore's dealing with some injuries. We have throughout the season, but right now, team very healthy. Petrovsky second down, completes it. No, he doesn't. Through the hands of Graham. Kadarius Tony with a big game could get to 100 or actually 1,000 yards receiving on the season. To the outside, the throw is caught, and there is Aaron Slay, the undrafted rookie out of, I forget, but seven yards and a first down to number four. We'll keep this on the ground. Tavares Towns, he is stuffed. Petrovsky on second down, has time, fires complete, and it's Graham. Gain of nine. Third and short, we're going to Tavares Towns. He gets the first down. Play fake Petrovsky. Time to throw Graham again. How many crossing patterns can he run? Second down for Petrovsky. He will leave the pocket and run across the Ravens 40. And they finally force him to slide after a long scramble to the 29. Nice call on the award talk. I was not even thinking about that. I really want to see him take that leap in development this year. And that will make his upcoming extension quite large. And there are no fifth-year options here in Madden 22. You know it was removed. I don't know why. Knocked away. Third and nine for Brian Petrovsky. And he dumps it off. Felt like he was 
a little rattled by the pressure there early. Like, he kind of started to react like the right tackle, Christian Tolbert, was going to get beat. Like, right there. Just not comfortable. And I think if he stands in there, he can give Johnson a chance up the seam. We do take the lead against Baltimore, and they go offset eye to take over this possession. Offset pistol, rather. It's Lamar outside. He makes a man miss. There he goes. Cut from behind by Jabril Peppers. This takes me back. Minnesota Dynasty playbook. I love the pistol offense, and that is the series that got me to really think that the pistol offense is the most versatile and maybe optimal offense for like the modern day game certainly i love it for the college game but i feel like a lot of teams don't use it much for uh in the nfl these days on occasion but uh i think the true art of the pistol offense is what you can do with your running backs offset and just creating more options for the quarterback that way Jackson's deep balls caught by Andrews at the sideline. It's goal to go at the 10. I love to create another pistol playbook. I don't know if EA's added like a lot of new plays. NCAA may still have more, uh, more fun there as Jackson dumps it complete inside the five. The NCAA playbooks, man, they were always special. And going back to some of the older games like I have in the emulator, there are some trick plays in there that are just fun as the Ravens cap it off with a touchdown great drive we didn't utilize Tavares Towns a ton on that opening possession we'll see if he gets some work here and it's a play fake watch out Petrovsky A draw play here. Towns has an opening, and he is out to the 26-yard line, but that is a three and out. I'm a little more focused on the offense today, so we're going to watch a lot of them. Maybe sim some of the defense as Darnay Holmes takes the football away. I'll give Towns one more drive, and then I'd like to move on to a new running back, maybe change every quarter. First and 10, we're going play action, a lot of that. Petrovsky caught, Thomas inside the 10. Throwing on second down, Petrovsky fires and it's knocked away. Over the middle now, caught for the touchdown, Jawan Johnson. What a season he's put together, man. Gordon Bright is now in the game. Ravens went and kicked a field goal, by the way, so we are tied. And Bright is going nowhere. We signed Bright off the Chicago practice squad earlier in the season. He does have a lot of explosiveness as he runs ahead for four yards. Three tight ends on the field. This is third and six. Petrovsky fades away, fires deep downfield. This one's caught by Thomas. Maintaining good positioning against the corner. And he's able to bring it in at the 20. We're not letting Thomas play in the slot today. He's still making plays out there. First and 10. Petrovsky to the end zone. Now intercepted Marlon Humphrey. Just a bad decision on first down. On to our next possession, and Petrovsky might be trying to make up for it. Oh boy, almost intercepted. Third down and four. Petrovsky has time, caught, and a first down for Gordon Bright. Looked a lot faster on that. I felt like on some of those runs, he kind of looked a little slow. Well, there's 15 yards, and he is a good pass catcher. New set of downs and a quick one, and Graham can't handle it. On second and 10, Petrovsky will get the pass off. He wants the big play once again. Thomas tipped it away from the defense incomplete. 
Third and 10, New York. Baltimore brings four, and the pass is caught! Down the sideline is Ruben Knight. He's bumped out at the 15. If he's on the field, no one's covering him. I can't quite explain it. It's kind of like Matt Asiato when he was with the Vikings. He was actually a pretty good pass catcher, and nobody covered him. I'm not sure if they just didn't respect him, but he was literally always open. And he had pretty good hands. First and 10, out to his left. Petrovsky slings it for a touchdown to Ray Sean Graham. Throwing against the grain there, just letting it rip. So if we take him out of the second half, we know today Petrovsky's already got a couple touchdowns. I might have this be Petrovsky's last drive. He's at 191 yards passing, two touchdowns. Might be enough for the day. A first and 10 for Petrovsky, and it's Bright making the catch gain of six. Baltimore still has all the momentum, though. They did score a touchdown before half. Maybe we'll watch more of their drives here in the second half. If you want to see Lamar Jackson tear apart our defense as I put in backups. Second and four, that one missed. A third down for Brian Petrovsky, and he'll fire one wildly to the bench. That might be enough for him today. James Bradbury is off the field right now. There are still some starters, most of our younger starters. Lamar Jackson with a penalty marker down is taken down by Luke Pope, who will be on the field plenty, along with C.J. Anderson, who is another run stopper that we've been developing, and I think he's actually come a long way. I don't show every play from every game, but some of the ones that end up getting cut are run stops, and Anderson is in on a lot of those. I don't know what happened there. Setting up the screen on second and 20, and Quinton got out there, just couldn't finish. Third and 12. We send four. Jackson knocked away. It's a Dory Jackson who breaks it up. And I think he's had a really good year. And there's Luke Cook checking out the, the tablet there, getting ready to take the field against this fierce Baltimore defense. Should be fun. Luke Cook shined in the preseason. Somebody had to entertain us. And Luke Cook certainly did. He also loved throwing to Aaron Slay. We'll see if that connection reunites. Let Luke cook, they say. Well, Cook enters the kitchen at the 29-yard line. And on first and 10, he's going to roll away and get sacked. Welcome to the NFL. By the way, can you believe it took me like five months to finally get tired of the uh, audio coming out of my controller? I finally turned that off. I don't know why. I haven't liked it this entire time. That was a pretty good game, though, for Gordon Bright, who has three catches. Third and ten for Luke Cook. He's got to let it fly. Cook fires deep, and it's incomplete for Aaron Slay. He almost had it. Lamar Jackson and the Ravens have it once again. We are not doing a good job of covering Mark Andrews. Covering tight ends in Madden is just one of the most difficult things. I don't think that their game engine really allows it. As the pass is now broken up, not bad. A third and seven for Jackson. To the outside and covered up well. Good defense. They faked the punt. They did not get it. Nice play. Why does he look angry? We made the play. Thanks to Antonio Superstar Golson. That was sweet. Play fake Luke Cook. Let's it rip wide open. Into Raven territory. Mike Stallworth. Juwan Johnson is out, by the way. We know him well, and I just don't think we have anybody that can do what he does. So he's not playing. Michael Thomas isn't playing. Cook, not quite as fast as Petrovsky. 
He still has Rayshon Graham and Kendarius Tony though, trying to get open. Bright heads outside, and he does not get much. Haven't been too impressed with the runs. The catches have been nice. Third down and 19. Want to get at least a little bit closer here for Justin Tucker. Cook has time and now throws it away. Justin Tucker did make the field goal and we move forward. Three point game late third quarter. Ravens on the move as Beltran applied a bit of pressure there and Jackson had to get it out. Jackson on third down, facing pressure, heads downfield, where it's intercepted by a Dory Jackson. I'm telling you, he's been a shutdown corner this year. They're not getting big plays on a Dory. Nice to see us still creating some pressure as well. Trying to go up top there to Rashad Bateman. Now, I want to see Cook settle down here. He's gotten some time, but you got to throw the ball. Cook first down. Extending and running it for a gain of eight. How about Nick Chubb's stat line down below? Eight carries, 162 yards, two touchdowns. Thinks he's Randy Moss. Can you imagine that running game that did well against us being even better with Nick Chubb? The run goes to Bright. He heads to the right side, and it's a gain of nine. We will get Ruben Knight some touches, too. Everything after this drive will likely go to him. Bright right side. He turns on the speed. Inside the 20. Bright. Oh, he couldn't get there. But there's a look at what Gordon Bright does best, which is go 0 to 60. He's got explosiveness if we need something in the event of Saquon Barkley going down. Not quite enough to get to the end zone, but a very impressive play. Let's see if they give him a chance to finish the job. Well, subbing after that makes sense. Ruben Knight is in the game, first and goal from the one. Straight ahead, powering into the end zone, touchdown Giants. Very great to see. We got a 10-point lead here on Baltimore. I love this. Ravens got to get something here on this drive, and they will gain about three on this play as Antonio Golson is shaken up. We do not have a lot of edge rushers on this team, but I certainly could play uh, Quincy Roche. Right now they have Jason Quinton in as the edge. I don't think that's what he does best as Ronnie Stanley stands him up, and that's a first down. Oh, I can't see. I tried to uh, fix this. It's showing the injury on the left side of the screen here. It's one of the bugs. I have to let this play run out and probably have to be in for this snap. I can't actually read. It said quad strain. So let's say Golson's day is done then. And hey, look, the traditional gameplay camera. And almost picked by Kendricks. We have Otis Springs getting some more snaps as well, and I've taken out Adoree Jackson. Second and 10, Jackson completes the pass over the middle, and now Tyler Beltran is shaken up. You can't take out all the starters, especially when some of the backups now are getting hurt. Third down and two, they will run it against a backup heavy defense, and Spurlock converts. Running to the right side. Nice job by Jason Quinton. This is good experience for him. Ten tackles for him today. We're going to have him making a lot of plays in this series. Wide open, though. Don't want to leave anybody that open. Running inside and plenty of space. Looked like Spurlock hesitated there, like there's so much room. Where do I go? Well, Baltimore's got a chance to cut into this lead now as they get into field goal range. 
And pressure's there. Jackson can't get away from Quincy Roche. Sending four on second down, and now Quandre Holt was the one that applied the pressure. Even without some of our best rushers out there, no Lawrence, Ojolari, or Golson, Lamar Jackson is still going to deal with pressure. Third and 22 outside of field goal range. We brought a blitz, and the pass is incomplete. Great effort. I thought Peppers was going to get there. That looks so good. And now they have to go for it. The first down line is not on the screen currently. And here goes Lamar Jackson under pressure, heaving deep toward the end zone, and it's incomplete. Let's go, let's go. Oh, here we go. Let's go. Ruben Knight is the running back as we look to close this game out. And Knight will get the carry, runs it left, he stiff arms the first defender and gains about seven. This is the number one defense in the league. And we've done a pretty good job making plays against them. Haven't seen much from Luke Cook here in the second half, but the running game has impressed me. To the right side, first down, Knight falls ahead. I'm looking for that, what happens when the first defender encounters the running back? Does he ever make a miss? Does he run through him? Does he fall forward? You gotta do something. Ruben Knight does that really well. First and 10, Cook wants to throw, I think. And he's going to fire to the end zone. It's caught up top, but there is a penalty. Stallworth did initiate contact. Who are they going to penalize here? It's a touchdown! I don't think offensive pass interference is even in Madden anymore. It's a touchdown for Mike Stallworth. Luke Cook has his first in his career. And it's suddenly a route. 17 point game we're almost done here in week 18 and it's been a fun one the Giants are absolutely the top team in the NFL this season but anything can happen in the playoffs there's no best of three there's no we'll get them tomorrow no you lose you go home and we got to make sure that we're ready but we've had a fantastic regular season. We've watched a lot more games this year than we usually do, but look at the season we've had. I mean, it makes so much sense to enjoy a season like this. If we were just, you know, a typical good season going 11 and 6, like maybe I'd watch a little bit less. But this team is must see TV. And Reuben Knight looks to seal it here, and he will fight for every extra inch. I love watching him run. He's absolutely Saquon Barkley's backup. I think what we would do then if Barkley went down is you'd have Knight as the primary running back and then Gordon Bright probably as the receiver just for that extra juice. Give me one right here to Aaron Slay. People want to see you throw to number four. Almost. You got it to Stallworth instead. Luke Cook, four of six, 87 yards and a touchdown. And that will do it. Stallworth almost goes for 100 yards today. And the New York Giants are playoff ready. Great win. We haven't lost to these top tier teams this season. I can't even remember who we lost to. Let's check out the stats quickly as we held Lamar Jackson to 217 yards and picked him off twice. That's a win. Petrovsky, two touchdowns, 198, only completed 50% of his passes because he wanted to throw it deep every play. Trying to take Lamar's MVP, I think. Luke Cook, 4 of 6, 87 yards. I thought he was very erratic in the pocket, but it ended up working out. Our run defense gave up some yardage here, as you tend to do against Baltimore. Gordon Bright ripped off a nice long run of 57 yards. Reuben Knight had 26. Tavares Towns, 4 for 16. And receiving, Mike Stallworth continues to impress. 
Michael Thomas did well with his three catches. And for this defense, 15 tackles. Are you kidding me? 15 for Jason Quinton. 14, 2, and 1. The teams that beat us this year were Tampa Bay back in week one and the Jaguars. That's right. This game. That overtime matchup. But yeah, we have not lost since week six. We've won everything since our week eight tie. Wow, the streak continued. That's five in a row. 17. Exactly. That has to be an NFL record. Who else is doing that? And the thing is, is I simmed a couple of those games. That is a statistical anomaly. And I guess now we've got to see who our next playoff opponent is going to be. It's also a chance for me to offer any contracts if I think now is the time. Do I think now is the time? That went up even more. That says almost $100 million. I think I have to wait on a lot of these because even some of the depth contracts like Quincy Roche, love to have him as depth. But at two years, 7.2, I still have to see what everything looks like. It'll probably fit. I want him back. I do want to buy something though. I want to go to the staff management screen here and I want at least one of the regression packages maybe two and actually on this one I'm not going to spend it on wide receiver for Michael Thomas I think I'm going to spend it at corner because we have a lot of veteran corners and I don't want them regressing and I might be able to do this again with one more point Maybe it's only one per year, but at any rate, I felt corner was more valuable because it affects more than one player right now. I don't know why you'd ever buy this hidden dev upgrade though, like, there isn't really a reason to, especially at 100 points. Let's take a look at the playoff bracket. We got the first round by and so did Cleveland. Jacksonville is the two, Tampa Bay is the six. Those are the two teams to defeat us. The Eagles are not in. San Francisco is the seven seed. The Colts are the seven seed. Ravens are a six, and they had the best defense in the NFL. There are some really good teams in the league this year. Anything can happen. So I'd say it's actually looking pretty likely, you know, we could have a rematch against the Buccaneers. They're the six. If they win and San Francisco loses, we would face them. If San Francisco wins, they automatically face us. That's also a team that I don't love going against. But hey, it's a playoffs. They're all good. But we ended the year with the number one scoring offense, third ranked passing offense, third ranked rushing, second ranked defense in points per game, number one against the run, 10th against the pass. Yeah, this has certainly been a rebuild of the New York Giants football team. We'll take a look at the uh, awards. Let's go there right now. MVP is Patrick Mahomes. Right at the end, he overtakes Lamar Jackson. I think that he can thank us for that, helping out. Urban Meyer still coach of the year, though. How does Russ Watson not win it? We went 14-2-1, but they beat us. Is that why? Could that be the reason? CMC Offensive Player of the Year, Petrovsky comes in second. Defensive Player of the Year is Daniil Hunter, Felix Landry, Curtis Bernard, no changes there. Petrovsky is the best quarterback in the NFC. I think that he'll have what it takes to get at least a star dev. James Bradbury, best defensive back. And let's go to the AFC side of things where Mahomes wins the Offensive Player of the Year. DeForest Buckner is the Defensive Player of the Year. Show everybody stats here, by the way. Like, why isn't that in here? I want to know what led them to win these awards without having to go through a million menus. Donovan Gerrard, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Marco Iglesias on defense. Here are the positional awards. 
saw a receiver there for the uh, Chiefs that we might have to check on. But let's go first looking at our stats. Petrovsky, one off of 40 touchdowns. Luke Cook took that one. What a year. Barkley, 17-14. Averaged 100 yards a game, not playing the season finale. Michael Thomas, 1,174 yards. I liked our receiving core a lot this year. And while there wasn't anybody standing out like in a major way, I just love how we can, you know, have a big Kadarius Tony game and we can win. Same with Ray Sean Graham. Jawan Johnson over a thousand is pretty sweet. And for the defense, Kazir White leads us in tackles. Jason Quinton, 82, three sacks, five tackles for loss. Seven sacks or seven picks for James Bradbury. 13 sacks for Dexter Lawrence, 12 and a half for Aziz Ojulari. Antonio Golston, seven and a half. Quandre Holt, six. Going to league leaders, most yards, and it's Patrick Mahomes by about 700. Daniel Jones in third. He has really turned around his career in Tampa, hasn't he? Like, he's in the conversation for getting a boost the star dev with this. Not bad, Danny Dimes. Let's see who we got for touchdowns. It'll be Mahomes, Petrovsky, Prescott, Mayfield. Baker's numbers right on par here with Petrovsky. At least touchdowns, interceptions. Jordan Love, 38 and 12. Darnold, 37 and 7. Interceptions, Tua, Tunga Vailoa, and then a bunch at 17. Rushing, Nick Chubb, almost 2,000, but he missed time. Only one game, though. 5.8 a carry, hardly fair. Christian McCaffrey had a really good year. Zeke, Derrick Henry. Obviously, we're not seeing a lot of drafted players here in the series stand out here, and that's one thing I look for is how far have those players come. But no running back drafted in this series even ran for 1,000 yards. Receiving, that is a little bit different because Marquise Payne is a superstar. Well, normal dev, but maybe superstar development soon. Great deep route running. Decent speed. Kind of decent all around. Like, those stats don't really tell you he's going to go for 1,500, but two years in, I mean, this is special. This is like Justin Jefferson production. Can't believe he was normal coming into this year with that great season, but I doubt he'll stay normal next year. Amari Cooper had a really good year. Robert Woods, Darnell Mooney, Tevin Smart. And we'll take a look at some overall ratings too, and I'll show you what I have currently for the XP sliders. There are a ton of thousand yard receivers in our league. Most TDs, Marquise Payne. And we go to defense here. We'll go by conference. DeForest Buckner broke the sack record with 25. Shattered it. Five picks here. Marlon Humphrey ties Tredavious White and Ashton Davis. In the NFC, 16.5 for Daniil Hunter. Seven picks for James Bradbury. I'm certainly a fan of boosted XP sliders. There are a lot of people that like closer to default. They don't like the higher ratings all the time, and I get that. But the game doesn't like adjust the salaries enough in those cases. And if you have lower or default XP sliders, you're going to have a league where no one changes teams, really. All the best players are easier to sign, and they'll just play their entire careers basically with one team. Not all of them, but in general, it's easy to keep around your team when those contracts are smaller, tougher when they are big. So I have adjusted the XP sliders. This is what I've had for the entire season. And let's go take a look now at the overall depth of our league right now and see if anything has to be more aggressive or whatever. But the big issue here in franchise is you come in with the base roster and those players all end up doing really well when you boost XP sliders. 
because they're already good overall high dev players who are going to be around a while so we have a few 99 overall quarterbacks right now but it's not too inflated here in the 90 overall range honestly we only have close to 10 here in the top 10 which i'm cool with and then we have some more in the 80s here petrovsky's in 86 and maybe too if these quarterbacks are higher rated maybe we'll see them uh not draft so many quarterbacks when they don't need them maybe there's an overall threshold where the cpu will finally stop doing that because we've had some teams take multiple first round quarterbacks I think it was the bears maybe fields isn't high enough to trigger whatever threshold they have in their logic they have put together running back is a really difficult one to handle because they just end up all getting to high overalls and you want regression to start to uh play a role here because we have so many high 90s running backs i mean all the superstar running backs are going to get there very early in franchise there's not really a way around that even josh jacobs gets up to a 98 tier but i think that'll take care of itself over time we probably have like 15 20 in the 90 overall and up range at least that's going to make their contracts large mostly i don't know when sanders signed this it was probably a little bit ago with these players getting older it'll start to shift the league a little bit and we'll see more of the young players get a chance and it's hard for them to develop when they're not on the field to begin with so there's a lot of moving parts that will keep uh players from developing even with higher xp sliders because you're helping out the players that are ahead of them on the depth chart already so this is kind of how it is you know this is still early in franchise we're in year four doesn't start to transform for a few years yet so i'm just trying to make sure that free agency is interesting and that's kind of my guide if free agency isn't very interesting we have to boost the xp sliders because teams should be having to make tough decisions and there should be premium free agents on a yearly basis offensive lines always tricky but i have boosted these players the most and i think that the defensive line could also use some love there and i think that uh the xp slider should reflect that some positions are easier than others to get balanced and some of these i don't have really any issue with another guide is to look at cap space here and now i don't know if anything happens here for teams that miss the playoffs because these are really big numbers for cap space if like it's already showing the players that aren't under contract going forward but i don't want a lot of the league to have a ton of cap space available either but we'll take a look at this more in the off season like there's no way the broncos actually played this year with 100 million in space i'm guessing that's probably just uh their season's done so all these players are listed as no longer being on their salary cap but let's go to the second round of the postseason, everybody. We are going to get our rematch. One of the only teams to beat us this year, way back at the beginning of the season, Tampa and New York meets again. We're not playing against Green Bay, but it's still going to be snowing in this one. Here's a look at your playoff bracket. We had Dallas move on, defeating Chicago. We have the three and four seeds out in the NFC. Meanwhile, Jacksonville wins handily over Indianapolis, the Chiefs over Baltimore, and the Bengals beat the Jets. So you have one, two, three, and five still going in the AFC, one, two, five, six in the NFC with a couple of upsets. So we got some great teams left. We get Tampa once again. Let's see if they have any injuries here. I think we're fine. We have no injuries right now, surprisingly. We've gotten very lucky. The Bucks have no injuries either. I do think that next season we could probably look to raise the injury slider just by a couple of points. Not even like five necessarily, like two or three. And that's one thing that'll help players develop too is 
when a starter goes down for the year and they got to play all season, suddenly they have a chance now to become a star dev player or at least rack up some stats and take their overall up a few points so they don't get replaced by the next rookie. There's a whole chain reaction there and I love it and I want it to feel very dynamic. So that's why I'm always hammering home how injuries are so important to a franchise experience. I'd say after going through the entire season, Tampa Bay is the only team that really stifled our defense, or our offense rather. That was the game where I thought we'd feature Michael Thomas, have a nice debut to the season. It was a very slow start. Petrovsky, 261 yards. Daniel Jones had three touchdowns. 3.1 yards a carry for Saquon Barkley. They are not easy to run on. You have to throw the ball against Tampa. And we didn't do it very well. Petrovsky had one of his worst games of the season. And we're hoping that over the course of this year, he has learned enough and improved enough to make sure this meeting goes a little differently. So, playoff football is coming your way tomorrow. Giants and Bucks. It's a big one, everybody. Our best season has brought us to this point, and I'm looking forward to it. So that will do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, even if you were more so wanting the playoff episode today. Won't be a long wait. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, leave your thoughts below in the comments, everybody. Playoffs start tomorrow. Have a great day.